In 2003, the Laney Rickman Blue Throat and Macaw Reserve Nest Box Program assisted 15 chicks fledge into the wild. This is the most Blue Throat and Macaw chicks to fledge in one year in the Nest Box Program. The 6,000 acre, 2,500 hectare Laney Rickman Blue Throat and Macaw Reserve, owned by Asociación Armonía, is in the southern part of the Blue Throat and Macaw's range. Bird Endowment has been supporting the Nido Adaptivo Nest Box program since 2005, previously in private cattle ranches in the area. A total of 128 chicks have successfully fledged from Armonia's Nest Box program, underscoring its substantial contribution to the conservation of this critically endangered species. The Blue Throat and Macaw Artificial Nest Box Program for the 2023 breeding season has yielded some encouraging results. Out of a total of 128 nest boxes installed, 14 were utilized by Blue Throat and Macaws, showcasing their increasing acceptance of our nest boxes in the area. Throughout the breeding season, there were 18 breeding attempts, resulting in laying of 47 eggs. Of these, 20 eggs successfully hatched and an impressive 15 chicks successfully fledged, surpassing the previous record of 12 fledged chicks in 2021. Here are the eight nest boxes that successfully had blue-throated macaw chicks fledged to the wild for 2023. The nest box sponsored by Laurel Rower had two chicks fledged into the wild. This box had two nesting attempts, which we assume was by the same pair. The first nest of three eggs was abandoned after a conflict with black-bellied whistling ducks. The second breeding attempt was successful with three eggs that hatched two chicks which developed normally and fledged early June. The nest box sponsored by Bird Gardens of Naples, Cariella and Lorman, had three chicks fledged to the wild. This nest also had two breeding attempts with the first nest with five eggs where two chicks hatched, but one chick could not sit up properly where they both died. The second breeding attempt was successful with three eggs and one chick fledging. The nest box sponsored by Kimberly DePaul in memory of Jean DePaul had two chicks fledge into the wild. One successful breeding attempt with two chicks fledging from their nest. A barn owl attempted to enter the nest but the cavity was too small for its head. The birds fledged in the wild late March. The nest box sponsored by Bird Gardens of Naples, Kiriel and Lorman, had three chicks fledged to the wild. This is our star nest box, where this was the fourth season it was used, and this year with three chicks fledging. There are hanging brown pendulum-like nests of the crested oral pendula in this tree as well, also found in two other successful nest boxes. There might be a mutualistic benefit for both species to breed in the same isolated palm tree, more eyes and bodies to fight off any snake or other predator. The first two eggs were found in early December and all three chicks were ready to fledge by early April. The nest sponsored by Karen Justice in memory of Max Justice fledged two chicks into the wild. A successful nest with two chicks fledged by March 30th. Three eggs were laid early in the season by December 14th. Two chicks hatched and developed normally. This was a fairly uneventful nest box with no conflict of fighting or potential predatory activity. The nest box sponsored in memory of Jim Cullen by his Parrot Forum's family fledged one chick into the wild. The nest started with two eggs where one hatched and the chick grew without events to fledge into the wild mid-April. Note, this nesting tree also had a oral pendula nest. Another successful nest with one chick fledging after normal development. Two eggs were found on December 14, 2022, of which one hatched. Note the oral pendula nest off to the left. The nest box sponsored by Dorothy Patterson in honor of a boon, artists and biologists unite for nature, had two chicks fledge into the wild. Three eggs were found on December 15, 2022, of which two hatched by the end of December. Two chicks developed quite quickly in comparison with other nests that were active at the same time. The first chick fledged by March 15th and the second by March 22nd. The nest box sponsored by Lori McFarlane had two chicks fledge into the wild. 
Here we see the threat some blue-throated macaws have with black-bellied whistling ducks. This box had a failed first attempt where one of the two eggs was found cracked. The second attempt was successful with three eggs laid by January 28th and two chicks developed normally and fledged by May 15th. We still do not understand exactly what are the perfect ingredients of a nest box. Sometimes we see intense battles over a specific box when there is an empty nest box 30 feet away. We wonder if some nest boxes might be popular because that was where the chick had fledged from. But it's encouraging this year that eight new nest box sites were used by blue-throated macaws. We are constantly improving our nest box program, but we do not believe that all blue-throated macaw chicks must survive. Nature must select for the healthiest to live a long life in the wild. We also know that often a young parent pair will have a few failed breeding attempts as it learns how to raise its young. This is part of the natural process. This year we had three blue-throated macaw nest boxes with eggs that failed and three nest boxes with one chick that died. These boxes were sponsored by Kim Dickerson in honor of Dabby, Keyland Torres, Ray Varela, Diane Hyde, Pet Paradise Virginia Beach, Aaron Severts, and Laura Barwick. Of the 128 nest boxes used this year, we had 14 nest boxes used by blue-throated macaws, where four were reused in the same year after a failed first breeding attempt. Over the years, it has become clear that with blue throats, the egg-laying stage receives less protective effort. They won't defend a nest with just eggs very well. But on the other side, this is a very fragile period, as they will abandon the nest with just eggs if outside conditions seem dangerous to them. We have witnessed startled birds cracking eggs on attempting to leave the box quickly, but it appears an abandoned nest with eggs does not mean they won't breed again the same year. Five nest boxes were occupied by black belly whistling ducks, where one of these boxes was a blue-throated macaw nest taken over by a pair of whistling ducks. One nest box was used by an unicolor blackbird and one nest box by a sneaky blue and yellow macaw that chewed access through the side. Through the program's initial 10 years, the blue and yellow macaws were significant competitors for nesting sites. Today, thanks to continuous adaptations and improvements, the blue and yellow macaws are no longer the primary competitors for the nest sites. In 2023, we were able to place a camera in front of each breeding blue-throated macaw nest box. The camera traps have shown clearly that there are specific threats like mammal predators, namely the brown capuchin monkey, and the tyra, a type of intelligent terrestrial otter. The traps have only shown owls, like the barn owl, as a potential bird nest predator. When we began the nest box program, we witnessed toucans attacking chicks in shorter boxes with wide holes. But since we changed the box and hole size, this has not been a problem. The camera traps have revealed that nest site competition with other species is a significant threat to blue-throated macaw successful breeding. Competition with the red and green macaw recorded again this year continues to be a threat to one of the boxes. The camera traps in the past have recorded fighting between black-bellied whistling ducks, which we did not think was that significant, as surely the blue-throated macaw's strong bill is a threat for a duck. This year we found a dead black-bellied whistling duck inside a blue-throated macaw nest box with two eggs, but we also found a dead blue-throated macaw with a broken wing near a nest box where the camera trap had recorded clashes with the black-bellied whistling duck the previous day. And again this year, we recorded quite serious clashes between different blue-throated macaws. This occurs occasionally each year, where when the chicks are close to fledging, another pair of macaws will fight with the nesting pair. The fights look quite serious, but we have not seen any wounded macaws. We are grateful to these who support this project through the Bird Endowment Nido Adoptivo program. Better yet, 128 fledged chicks are extremely grateful for your support. Please consider supporting Armonia's Laney Rickman Blue Throated Macaw conservation work through Bird Endowment.